Hey everybody, Dallas again with Chaos Fragrances. Today we're back with another fragrance review. This time we're going to be taking a look at the newest fragrance from Abercrombie & Fitch. This one is called Authentic. So let's take a look at the bottle really quickly first. I normally don't do a presentation segment or anything, or I really don't even talk about the bottles that often in my reviews, but I just wanted to point this one out. This is actually a pretty nice bottle uh, for an Abercrombie & Fitch fragrance. It's very heavy. It's got a lot of weight to it. It's a 100 ml bottle. It has this nice um, textured let lettering and whatever else you want to call that on the front. And the cap, believe it or not, is actually magnetic. So um, as you can see, it is a magnetic cap. It's not the best magnetic cap out there. It's not like a Dior fragrance or anything or a Chanel, but it is pretty nice. Again, we're talking about an Abercrombie & Fitch fragrance here. These fragrances are usually going to be in the pretty low price range. This one just came out, like I mentioned earlier. I do carry this one on my website for around $50 or so for this 100 ml bottle. Again, that's because it is brand new. Over time, it is going to get even cheaper than that. So if you are interested in picking up a bottle now, check it out on my website if you'd like. I just wanted to point that out. This is actually a pretty nice bottle. Again, it's got some nice weight to it. Uh, the cap is magnetic, feels pretty solid. Uh, what you're getting here, for that price is pretty decent. Now let's go ahead and move on to the part that really matters though, and that is the actual scent itself. So when I first sprayed this fragrance on, what I get right away is bergamot, grapefruit, and a little bit of a woody touch. Definitely a lot of citrus right off the opening with a little bit of a woodiness and a little bit of a spicy aromatic feel as well. That bergamot and that grapefruit is pretty much right there head to head. Uh, I get this nice tartness from the bergamot and this nice juicy citrusy uh, overall feel from the grapefruit. It is a pretty pleasant opening. There's also ginger and some pink pepper and that is most likely what's giving it a little bit of that spicy kick. So it starts off fresh, spicy, a little bit aromatic. Working into the dry down, I start to pick up on a little bit of suede, lavender, and even a little bit of oak moss and that gives it more of an aromatic fougere type of scent. So from the beginning, working into the dry down, this stuff does smell very nice. Um, it isn't a bad smelling fragrance at all. So if you look on Fragrantica and you look down to where it says, this fragrance reminds me of blank, you're gonna see that there are people comparing it to Aventus. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know where that comes from. I don't get really any Aventus from this. There's no pineapple, there's no birch. There's a little bit of woodiness, but it's not birchy like an Aventus. It doesn't have that muskiness like Aventus does. Do I think it smells like Aventus? Absolutely not. What I will say though, when I first smelled it, the fragrance that came to mind first is Elysium. I did get just a little bit of an Elysium vibe. Most likely it's from that grapefruit bergamot, that little bit of a spicy kick as well, uh, just that citrus combination. That's probably where that's coming from. But like I said, that's just a little bit. I just get a little bit of a taste of Elysium. Definitely not a clone, definitely not not, you know, anything similar to it. But like I mentioned, when I smelled this for the first time, that's kind of what my mind went to. I personally didn't think of Aventus. That didn't cross my mind until I looked on for Grant again, saw that people were actually comparing this to Aventus. Again, like I mentioned, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if people are trying to be funny or if they're just, you know, voting that up even when they haven't smelled it, but I really don't get an Aventus vibe from the scent. I just did a review on Mont Blanc Explorer, and in that video I mentioned that, you know, in the opening it smells a little bit like Aventus, and then as it goes on, it gets farther and farther away from that. With this stuff here, I don't really get any Aventus at all, so I'm not really sure what's going on with all of these quote-unquote Aventus clones and Aventus-inspired fragrances, uh, but this one definitely doesn't really do that at all. With all of that being said, this does still smell very nice. It's a pleasant fragrance. Um, I do think it kind of goes on its own a little bit in terms of what it is. You know, it is something different. Like I said, I personally get a little bit of an Elysium vibe, but not too much. Nothing overboard. Like I said, not even close to a clone. Not even really close to an alternative, I wouldn't say, because it's not, you know, that close to it. But it does have just a little bit of a hint of it. Um, that's kind of what I would compare it to. So let's go and touch on the performance of this real quick. And this is where this kind of goes downhill and it's pretty much going to be going downhill from here because performance is not good at all. Uh, longevity, three, four hours on my skin is what I've typically been getting, which really sucks because this does smell really nice, but it just does not last at all. Projection, mm, there really isn't any. I mean, 
Um, you can get it to project a little bit if you do extra sprays and I mean, do a lot of extra sprays, I'm sure it would work. But in terms of, you know, just doing a few sprays and going out, it's not going to be projecting that much. It hasn't been projecting that much on me. In order for me to smell it when I'm testing it, I really have to put it up to my nose to be able to pick it up. And again, with longevity, it doesn't last that long. So it pretty much goes away really quickly. That's really a bummer because this is a nice scent. It just doesn't perform worth a crap. And I'm okay with fragrances that don't perform that great. You know, like the five to six hour range is okay for me. But around that three hour range that I've been getting from this, sometimes even a little bit less, it's just not worth it at that point. So one thing I do want to say is that this is an eau de toilette concentration. So what I feel like is most likely going to happen is they're going to release an eau de parfum intense or extreme version of this at some point and, you know, amp up the performance, maybe make it a little bit sweeter, maybe make it a little bit of a different twist on the scent. But I do predict that happening at some point. They did the same thing with First Instinct, right? First Instinct Eau de Toilette, I can't even talk. First Instinct Eau de Toilette, that does okay. It performs better than this one does, that's for sure, but definitely not that strong. And a while after they came out with the Extreme version, which is an Eau de Parfum, and that stuff performs better. It's a little bit sweeter. So I would say that they're most likely going to be doing that with this scent as well at some point, and I would hope so. If they take the scent, beef it up a little bit, give it better performance, maybe give it a little bit more depth, uh, something a little bit extra, I would definitely buy it and I would wear it quite often. However though, with this current version right here, the performance is so bad that really it's just not worth it. So let's go and talk about when you can wear this scent. It's an extremely versatile, easy to wear citrus fragrance with you know some woody depth. So you can wear it for any situation for any time of the year. This could easily be a signature scent, again, talking if it performed better, then it would be a great signature scent, but it doesn't. So because of that, you know, it is held back. This is definitely more suited for the warmer weather, though, because of that nice citrus. But like I said, it's so versatile and it's so, you know, easy to wear that it could work for any situation all year round, but definitely suited for the warmer weather. Compliment factor on this is going to be really good as well. Again, it's a clean citrus fragrance with a little bit of woods, a little bit of a musky smell, a a little bit of a spicy touch. So really that type of DNA, perfect for compliments. I really don't think anyone is going to dislike this scent on you because like I said, it's so easy to wear. It's so mass pleasing and quite frankly, it's so basic that really I don't see anyone disliking it. The problem is, and you already know what's coming, the performance. If this doesn't perform good, you're not going to get compliments because no one is going to smell you. And that's exactly the case here. No one is probably going to smell this on you unless you're spraying it on your hand and like sticking it in their face uh, to smell it because it just doesn't perform good. So because of that, it's not going to be a good compliment getter. If you sprayed half the bottle on yourself and walked out, then yeah, you probably will get some compliments. So again, Abercrombie & Fitch, if you're watching this, release an Eau de Parfum version, increase the performance, give it a little bit more depth and release that and you're going to have a really nice fragrance on your hands. But until then, I just don't really see this one being worth picking up that much. I do like the scent and you know I am glad that I picked up a bottle for this review but beyond that it's really not worth it to me. So just to kind of wrap this up again do I think this is worth picking up at a blind buy? Really in my opinion no. I would personally skip this one and go for just about anything else and again it's hard for me to say because it does smell nice. It does really smell good. But the performance is just so bad that really, at that point, it's just not worth it. Again, like I mentioned, I do carry it for around $50 on my website, which is decent. That's better than what it would be at retail. That's still on the high side, though. I think over time, once it gets down to the price point of around maybe $30, at that point, it may be worth picking up. But until then, like I said, I just don't think it's worth it. There are lots of other great fragrances out there that you can pick up for around $50. I've got a ton of them on my website in that price range that are, you know, a lot better than this one. So that's just something to think about. I would personally take that $50, put it towards something else that's a little bit better, something that's going to perform better and just overall be a little bit uh, more of a better scent. But if you do really want to try this one out, then definitely go for it. In terms of scent, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. The performance, though, is what's probably going to have you let down. Like I said earlier, I just reviewed Mont Blanc Explorer. And in that video, I said I didn't really like it that much either. But I would probably choose Mont Blanc Explorer over this one just because, again, it performs a little bit better. So, guys, that is my review on Abercrombie & Fitch Authentic. 
If you have tried this one, let me know what you think of it down below. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have this one on my website along with over 600 other designer and niche fragrances that I've listed, all at competitive prices. So definitely go check it out if you're interested. And that's gonna do it, guys. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss when I post. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.